Uh, our guest speaker today is, uh, I guess you would call him a fixture in Atlanta. Uh, we were just talking and I asked him how long he had been with the Atlanta Journal Constitution. He said, uh, pretty good while. I said, well, you got there right after they got the first Gutenberg press then. <laughs> and he said, not long after. But Mr. Jim Galloway, he's uh, been with the, the, Constitu the Journal Constitution for 35 years. That's, a, that's unheard of in today's job market to be anywhere 35 years. Uh, he writes the uh, AJC's Political Insider blog and a column from uh, about Atlanta, Georgia, and national politics. And he's got some really good insight into what's going on, not only in just the political scene, but just what's going on in Georgia and in the nation. So uh, everybody give a big round of applause and welcome Mr. Jim Gallagher. Thank you, Mr. Thank you, guys. Thanks, Mayor. All the rest of you. Uh, let me see if I, I didn't only had time to kind of really handwrite some notes. I don't have my computer, uh, my my work computer, hooked up to my home printer yet. So that's that's one thing I got to do. Uh, uh, this is rapidly turning into one of my favorite gigs uh, here. Uh, I uh, the alarm went off this morning. First news I heard was 75 was closed down because of a truck wreck, <laughs> and I just smiled. <laughs> I, I live I live out in West Cobb, Dallas Highway, just off off that. Uh, been out there for uh, a lot more than 30 years, uh, long enough to pay off the first mortgage, <laughs> but but I haven't paid off the second one. Uh, uh, my wife and I have just, just just love it out there. We have two kids. Uh, uh, my oldest student taught over here at Hiram High School, uh, but she works over at North Cobb now. So sorry, sorry you missed. You know she was available. She was available. <laughs> uh, my second one uh, just got back from. She's visiting us from Paraguay. She's with the Peace Corps, so we're happy about that. She's going to be here till. Uh, next Thursday, and then we lose her for the rest of the year. But, uh, uh, like Robert said, I have uh, I'm I, I write the uh, political column and uh, coordinate the, the the blog for the, the political insider blog for the Atlanta Journal Constitution. Uh, we were one of the first people to do politics online, uh, and so we're, we're that's that's. So that's how old people get got involved in it. We, uh, um, I just tallied out up our page views for last year. We had you know 3.5 million visits, and and if you were part of that, thank you very much. Every little click pays a little bit of my salary. Uh, not enough of it, but uh, but I think I'll I think I'll 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 eke it out till retirement. Uh, uh, you know I'm I'm I'm, I'm one of these old farts that has kind of gotten pushed into the social media world. You know, I've got 10,000 Twitter followers now. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know what to do with them, but, <laughs> uh, but, I, but I've got them. Okay, all right, but you brought me here just to kind of give a preview of the legislative session and maybe uh, a look at what's going to be a stupendous political year in Georgia. It's going to be a great, you know, if, man, there's going to be so much money and so much news. I wish I had a TV station. You know, you guys want an airport. Yeah. I want a, t I want a TV station and get some of that, get some of that money that's going to, going to uh, pour down here. It is going to be a very quick session. All signs point to that. I mean, we say that every year. We do have a little more evidence to pick that up. Uh, they, they, they'll probably, probably shortly after, after uh, I'd, I'm looking at maybe March 17th, 18th, 19th, somewhere in that stretch. Uh, the main reason, of course, is we've got an early primary. They've taken earliest primary in the, in, in 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 our history. We go from from July, uh, mid July, you know, even early August, all the way to May May 20th. That means you have qualifying in the middle of the session. So you've got all these state legislators worried that if they vote wrong on this bill or on that bill, well, some lobbyist is going to pony up and give them a candidate to run against. You know, it's it's it's, it's very worrisome for them. But I'll tell you what, you know, just to give you a, a measure of how unusual it is, 
I looked up uh, uh, Jimmy Carter's uh, gubernatorial race against Carl Sanders, 1970. Guess when the primary was? Somebody. July? Second week of September. You know, I mean, it was, it was, I mean, that's, you know, that's how, that's how little the ge general election meant. Uh, and it's, it, it is kind of a recognition that we're headed toward a political uh, future where the general election starts to matter again. That's what, that's, that's, that's the undercurrent of all this. And we'll get, we'll get more into that later on. Uh, let me r run very quickly with some of the topics that we're going to, we're going, we're going to be hitting in the, in the legislature. First of all, of course, is money, you know. Uh, Governor Deal is going to put up a $20 billion budget, double that if you count the, uh, all the federal money involved. Uh, but, but the legislature works with the $20 billion. Uh, they've gotten, not, we've built up our reserves up to $900 million again. So, so we're, we're, in, we're in much better shape than we, we've been in the last five or six years. I mean, this is, Deal will be the first governor in, in that period. I mean, if you remember, I mean, uh, Sonny Perdue's term was just crushed. The, the, the last two years of his term was cru were crushed by, by just by the, by the recession. Uh, we're going to have some raises for teachers, maybe 2 to 3 percent, the first in five years. Maybe some merit increases for state employees. I'm looking at you, Ms. Labor Department. Uh, basically, what deal? What we're what we're hearing the deal is going to do is he's going to give lump sums. He's going to give lump sums to 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 county school systems and say pay and and use it as you like. If you want to pay teachers more, that's fine. If you want to get rid of a few furlough days, that's that's even better. And he's going to work that way with the same with the same with with departments. He's going to give he's going to give uh, the Department of Labor, uh, you know, this much extra and say, spend it how you will. It won't be enough for across the board raises. So you're going to see a lot of picking and choosing on merit raises, so, which is going to create some interesting discussions there. Okay, transportation, which I know you folks. Oh, first of all, the airport. All right. You guys are going to need a lobbyist down there, or at least, or at least, you know, get get some get you know, make sure your state reps are just just juiced and eyeballing every piece of legislation because I can tell you, Delta's got some surprises for you to see if they can block this thing. I don't know what the you know, I don't know what it is. Nobody's clued me in, but you know, but if you're looking at, but they could easily you know increase the restrictions on on bond referendums. They could add requirements for 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 uh, countywide votes on this, on that. Uh, this is hardball, and uh, y'all are going to be, uh, be have to have to watch. You know, by the way, I would very much enjoy driving from my house to an airport uh, in, in Paulding County. It would be, that would be, that would be, a, that would be a great pleasure for me. Uh, but transportation, otherwise, I don't, given the defeat of the sales tax last year, I don't think you're going to see, and the fact that this is an election year, I don't think you're going to see anything change that. That'll, that'll happen in, in 2015. Uh, you will see, and this is prob probably going to come next month, uh, you're going to see some massive federal dollars flow into the Port of Savannah, which is, which is very good news for the state. But that's that's likely to come in uh, Obama's uh, budget proposal, and that should be that should be coming out in February. Look for Saxby Shambliss to get a lot of the credit for that, uh, just as a as a going away present. Uh, seriously, I mean, I mean seriously, and and I, you know, I uh, uh, I think it'll have his name on it. Um, okay, now the loudest issue you're going to see at the Capitol is Medicaid and Medicaid expansion. It's going to be loud because you will have an influx of Democrats coming in. They're really gearing up their, 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 uh, their, uh, their political organization. Up in North Carolina last session, you had something called Moral Monday, where they, every Monday you'd have a huge crowd gather inside and outside the state capitol. And uh, they, they caused some, 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 uh, some ruckuses. Uh, they're trying to replicate that in Georgia. Medicaid expansion is their first target. There'll be others. But, of course, if you're a Democrat, you're arguing that you're leaving 400,000 people maybe in Georgia uncovered 
by not, by not taking three years of free federal money. If you're a Republican, you're saying, yeah, but after that three years, what happens? And can, can the federal gov will, the cover will the federal government keep up its, its share of, of the promise? You know, Deal doesn't think so. But the, now the, the, the sticking point in this, and this is where it gets, this is where it gets bad if you're, if you're a Republican, is that you know, the, the Supreme Court decided that Obamacare was constitutional, but it was unconstitutional to require states to expand Medicaid, right? Okay. But in the original law, what they did was, uh, it's called a dish pa payment. I, I couldn't tell you what the, what the acronym is. There's somebody here, here who does. But fe the federal government has been subsidizing hospitals that do a whole lot of indigent care work, all right? But with the, they presumed with the expansion of Medicaid that those payments would go away. So you have no expansion of Medicaid in Georgia, and you have that decrease in federal funding. It's going to kill Grady, but more importantly, you're going to see, I mean, there are predictions you could see five to ten rural South Georgia hospitals close the doors. That's not good news. That's not good news in terms of economic development, and it's not good politically uh, if you're a Republican trying to, trying to maintain South Georgia. It, that becomes a serious problem, and you may see some, uh, some attempt uh, 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 in the state legislature to, to address that. What it is, I don't know yet. Okay, you've got, uh, oh, okay, Medicaid's the loudest one, the most expensive one issue. The one that's getting all the lobbyist money is the Medicaid malpractice. Uh, I'm sorry, the, the medicine, medical malpractice bill. It would, it would kind of do away with all lawsuits, medical malpractice lawsuits in Georgia, and kind of we'd convert to a workers' comp situation where you'd get smaller payments but a lot more payments. Now, you've got some business people. Brandon Beach over in Roswell is the, uh, is the, is the, the, the legislature, legislator pushing it, but Bernie Marcus is kind of the, for, the, the, the Home Depot guy. He's the guy that's really pushing this thing. Uh, but you, it's, it's one of those really strange situations where, the, where MAG, the Medical Association of Georgia, opposes the bill, as do the trial lawyers. So I'm not sure how far that's going to get. But there's going to be a lot of money spread around, to, to, at least to, 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 to give the illusion that it, might, that it might go somewhere. OK, next one that you all really ought to pay attention to is the cityhood movement. Now, this mostly affects DeKalb. We're going to be talking about mostly about DeKalb. But, you know, ever since Sandy Springs was, 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 uh, was, uh, was created, you know, what they, what they did was because, because, the, uh, because the Fulton County delegation didn't want it, there was a workaround. It wasn't considered local legislation. It went around to the, the General Assembly as a whole. And the Republican-controlled General Assembly approved the city uh, of Sandy Springs. That has become the, uh, the, the way we do things now, okay? And you have in, in DeKalb County, we had Dunwoody created a couple of years ago, Brookhaven was created last year. This year, there are four cities on the block, okay? They're gonna carve that county up all together. Uh, and it's got implications for school systems and all. Uh, it's, it's, the question is, is not whether it's going to get carved up, but how quickly it is. And, you know, there's some efforts to slow it down, so simply to get a grasp of all the implications. Again, education is a big deal here, because you've already got Dunwoody pushing for its own school system. Now, I, I say you should pay attention to it, because the cityhood movement isn't going to stop with DeKalb County. It's going to move into Gwinnett, it's going to move into Cobb, and eventually it's going to move into Paulding County. I know it's already hit Douglas County. Uh, so, so it's something that y'all need to y'all need to pay attention to the way we are doing it, uh, and 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 kind of keep an eye on that because it will come. It, it's going to come at you pretty quick. You know, maybe maybe not this year, maybe not in five, but it'll be there. Uh, guns are probably the first issue that's going to be dealt with. Uh, you know, there's a there's an when they when they adjourned the the, the session. There was an omnibus uh, gun bill hanging fire. It passed the Senate, passed the House, and it had made, uh, reached an agreement in a conference committee for all the changes. But it hadn't gotten back to both chambers before they adjourned. 
So it could come out on it could come out on the very first day or the second day. Republicans are pretty well all right with it, except for one provision. It, it would it would allow guns in uh, churches, synagogues, other houses of worship. It would be the onus would be on the ch on, on the houses of worship to to levy any prohibitions on on firearms, and that that's if you're a church that that's a liability issue. It's easy, you know, if if uh, if the state bans guns, you know, that's one thing. If the if a church bans guns, then it's their decision. And if something happens, eh, you know, maybe maybe there's 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 something they need to worry about. The big argument right now is whether uh, guns would be allowed on public university campuses. Uh, Deal will not. The governor will not say so publicly. He doesn't like the idea. Uh, and and uh, uh, it, it, it's it's you you've got you've got you do have law enforcement worried about because they're dashing into to all these shooter situations, you know, they uh, they they're not they're not interested in seeing uh, a young twenty year old kid uh, pop up with his with 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 with, uh, with a Smith and Wesson and he's not the bad guy, you know it's. That, that that kind of situation makes them nervous. What you're probably going to see, what they, the the bill that was left, it required any anybody who carried concealed on a college campus to undergo um, uh, maybe eight weeks of training. Okay, uh, your your Second Amendment enthusiasts do not like training requirements. They think they're unconstitutional. You know, you know, and and so I think that's going to become the out. The, they will be okay with dropping the campus carry uh, portion because they think it's unconstitutional. The regents will be happy. They'll drop that out. They'll pass the other part of the bill out, and everybody, everybody will uh, declare victory uh, until the next session when they go back at it. Okay, but that'll, that's supposed to move like in the, sec in the first two or three days that you could. Okay, education. You guys are very interested in education. We've got a bunch of sticky issues. We've got... Uh, uh, Deal has made. Deal said he, he wants to address uh, how county, uh, how school systems are funded. He wants to, to to walk away from QBE and find something that actually works. I mean, I'm old enough to know when Joe Frank Harris passed QBE, and I know it has never, ever, ever been fully funded. You know, and we're just we're just not very honest about about how we allocate school dollars in the state. You will see some arguments over Common Core. That's the uh, that's the Sunny Purdue initiated effort to to uh, not to federalize, but to create some national standards for education. They're they're going to try to f it's, it's, that's become a big issue uh, on uh, in within Tea Party circles. But the problem is the state has really invested a whole lot of money into it, and they don't want to back away from it. I think what you're going to do you're you're going to see them. Take the name Common Core and call it something else, you know. Call it Georgia Core, and that's how they're going to ditch that that problem. It'll they'll they'll there'll be some legislation. They'll try to they'll try to they'll try to they'll try to if if, if any teeth that it has they'll they'll try to yank it out, and and see if they can they can escape the 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 the, the problem that way. Uh, tech schools. Tech schools are going to make out like bandits. Uh, yes, you ha I mean, uh, uh, Governor Deal yesterday announced a, a kind of his initiative for it. Uh, a kind of, to, and any any student in a tech school who gets a three point five, who keeps a three point five grade school average, gets everything paid for. Uh, and you'll see, it, it's not going to end there. And the, the reason this is happening, of course, is tech schools. I think could be called the biggest blunder. Of the deal administration, not purposeful. It was it was accidental, and but when they when they when they moved the hope up for for uh, uh, university students uh, to what was it? Did, did they move it to three point five for 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 a full ride? Okay. Right, exactly. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, but they raised the yeah. They on tech schools they raised from 2.0 to 3.0 on the you know uh, I mean it was 2.0 on the theory 
that, you know, your plumber really doesn't need to know the plot line of Wuthering Heights, you know? And, and, and I can't disagree with that. I mean, but what, when they raised it to 3.0, they lost thousands upon thousands of, of students. I mean, it gutted the funding for the tech school program, but it also left all these businesses in Georgia who depend on blue-collar workers or t highly skilled tech workers, it, it left them without any job recruits. So the deal, has, deal in the legislature has, has been backpedaling on this very quietly over, over the last couple of years, and I think this is, this is kind of, this is, the, the, this, is the, this is intended to make you forget all about it. So, so uh, the fun bill, I, I, I always pick out one fun bill just to kind of keep an eye on. Uh, and you saw that Colorado has legalized marijuana for recreational purposes. New York may be about to do the same thing. You are going to see at least a couple hearings on the expansion of medical marijuana in Georgia. Uh, uh, Josh McCoon, Republican out of Columbus. Uh, this is this is this is uh, this has got legs among your libertarian uh, Republicans. So I, I don't want to. This is not this is not a Democratic move. Okay, if it were a Democratic move, it wouldn't be going anywhere. But but li your libertarian uh, 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 faction in the Republican Party they liked they they like this this issue. Uh, it speaks to independent judgment, and uh, they. McCoon wants to see it loosened. Right now, I think it applies only to glaucoma and maybe uh, cancer. But they, uh, but they want its use to be able to apply to other, elsewhere. But it'll be an interesting taste to s test to see where we go here. Okay, how are we doing on time? Okay, five more minutes, and then I'm going to open it up to questions. Okay, all right. Now, all of this is being in, is in the context of the best U.S. Senate race we've seen in years and years and years and uh, a really interesting governor's race. I mean, you know, hands down, my guy for, for, for political figure of the year is Saxby Shambliss. When he resigned last year, this, this month last year, he just kind of laid, laid, the, the, laid open the groundwork. Everybody's running for everything. You've got all these, I mean, I have no idea who's gonna win Phil Gingrey's seat. You know, that's, that's just, I mean, and I live, I mean, he's my congressman. I couldn't tell you who's got the upper hand in that race. Uh, uh, and I'm, I'm okay by that. I, I, I'm, I'm all right with that, yeah. Uh, uh, but let's, let's take the governor's race first, okay? All right, the governor has posted, I think, uh, he's already raised $10 million. You have to, he is the favorite, okay? He, is, he really is the favorite, all right? Uh, John Barge, state school superintendent, has 25,000 left in the bank, okay? He doesn't raise money. He doesn't like to raise money. What he is, is he gonna win? No, he's not gonna win. But he is a very inconvenient fellow because he's with education. And he says some really interesting things. Uh, like uh, last week he said, if, if the governor and the legislature has a secret plan, have a secret plan to shift the public school system into private hands, they're doing a great job with pub the way they, they're funding public education. You know, that's coming from your state school superintendent, a Republican. That's, a, that's, that's, that's pretty heady stuff right there, okay? Uh, uh, Dalton Mayor uh, David Pennington, he's your Tea Party candidate. He's very aggressive. Mm -hmm. He can self-fund to a certain degree. Uh, and he's focused on challenging uh, deals economic. Uh, accomplishments. Uh, so, so you know, so you, it's it. They're they're annoying, uh, rather than consequential. I think uh, right now to deal. Then you have Jason Carter, and Jason Carter has done something interesting. He has not resigned his seat in the state senate. He has decided to forego the cash that he might might have been able to raise during the session, and instead use use the senate chamber as a bully pulpit. And that's why Republicans were so worried about Don Balfour, who was on trial last month. Uh, he's uh, the Snellville state senator on trial for misuse of his legislative uh, 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 expense account. They wanted him gone because otherwise you would have Jason Carter uh, kind of drilling down on uh, the governor's ethics problems uh, and, and a dysfunctional ethics commission and pointing to Mr. Balfour as a kind of a poster child. He gets to do that now because Balfour was acquitted, but 
you know, it's only an acquittal. And it's politics. So, uh, <clears throat> now, very quickly, Senate race, and then we'll get to your questions. Okay, you have eight GOP candidates. You might end up with more. You have seven debates. Seven debates scheduled by Chairman John Padgett. Starting, starting, the first one is in Adel. And, and to show you how much he hates journalists, he's made them all on Saturday nights. You know, so he's killed, he's killed two months worth of weekends for us. So, so we're, we're really delighted. Uh, but but think, about, think about one of the big problems I identified in the 2012 presidential race was the number of debates that Republican presidential candidates engaged in and how that left them exposed. So kind of keep that in mind. Uh, I think, I mean, Kingston in the money race, Kingston will lead, followed by David Perdue, that's Sonny's cousin. Uh, if I had to get, but if I had to give a guaranteed slot in a runoff, and there will be a runoff, I'd have to give it to Paul Brown. I really would. Uh, uh, based on the intensity of the people who follow him, I mean, his followers are really strong for him. He gets out there early. Uh, I don't know about y'all, but in, in, in my neck of the woods in West Cobb, the only signs I see are Paul Brown signs with Barry Loudham look right under them, okay? Uh, and, and the GOP establishment has gone after him three times, and, it's, and he's beaten them every time. So I'm just, you know, I'm, that's what, at least, at least think, consider him as a, as, a, as a probable contender in a runoff, whether he would, uh, the, the, the establishment, they're lining up behind Kingston. I don't think Gingrey is scratching right now. Uh, Karen Handel, of course, uh, has a, has, is the only one with statewide experience, but she and the governor don't get along too well. You know, and this could be about, about the governor quietly you know, putting out a few hand signals or something. Uh, of course, you do have Michelle Nunn. Uh, uh, everybody, who, who remembers Sam Nunn? Okay, all right, okay. That's her strength. Uh, she has got a, she's, she's got, she's, she's done great on fundraising, maybe two million, I think she has two million in the bank right now. So when your, your lead uh, Senate candidate is chosen and is broke, she'll have two million to play with. And, and, and the winning Republican candidate will still have to raise money. That's not as big as a deal as it sounds, because I will tell you, if, if, if control of the, the U.S. Senate is at stake, then money's not going to be an issue for either side, that it will be pouring in from the third parties. And, and uh, uh, if you advertise uh, your businesses, you may have to go to another medium outside of TV, because you're not going to be able to, I mean, I mean those, those, those rates are going to spike. Uh, and I, I'll tell you a secret, TV stations love this third party ruling that puts all the money in because if it's a candidate coming it to you for an ad, by law they have to offer the candidate the lower price. It's not the same way with the third party candidate. They, tra they, tra they charge you out the roof. So, okay, well that's where we are. That's where my notes run out here. And my gosh, I've got about four or five minutes. So at least two questions worth. Yes, sir. Uh, that's a hard one. You've got you've got Alicia Morgan on the Democratic side. Uh, she, I, I think she's emerging as the as the con, kind of the cons, consensus Democratic candidate, but it, she's not going to be a terribly strong one because the the, 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 the teaching or teacher organi organizations don't really trust her she's she's been part of the charter school movement and 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 that's that's going to weaker weaken her among uh democrats it might get her get her a few extra votes on the on on the independent side though uh i would have to say right now your lead your, your lead republican is probably nancy jester but that's just a guess uh she's the the school board member who is uh kind of booted off accidentally well not I mean, she was in the in the group that Governor Deal removed, uh, but, and I think in the end she went voluntarily. Uh, there are a couple others that I'd be I'd be I'd be, but I'd be making a mistake to to try to name them. Yes, sir.
Mm -hmm. That's his big liability. Mm -hmm. No. I think they're waiting to get through the legislature, and and because it's going to be a, it's going to be a mad. I mean, the legislature is going to going to adjourn maybe the end of March, and that's what six weeks away from the vote, and and they're going to want to concentrate all their TV in that one area right there. I don't think uh, you've you've seen a couple. I think maybe Candle has put out a couple ads. Uh, Kingston has the biggest problem though in that he is he is from from he, he's he is from Savannah. That's not, I mean, they, he's not been a part of Atlanta media, so he hasn't gotten the, the, the name recognition that, that, say, a Phil Gingry does, or even a Paul Brown does. Uh, and, I mean, he put up a, a, an office mm -hmm. in Duluth just last week, uh, and, and he's, been, he's been living north of I-20, which he needs to do. Uh, yes, sir, and then you. Yeah, it's it's you know yeah, it, and 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 I'll tell you what I mean. They, we've talked about dissolution of counties for years and years and years, and I've never. But you can't. The county identity is so strong. It just. Uh, I had an editor, uh, Jim Wooten, once who 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 put me on the road with a legislative panel, that was that wanted to consolidate counties, and it just went nowhere. People, they, they almost got lynched. Uh, seriously, what they're what they're trying to what they're trying to do on the on the cityhood movement. The problem is cityhood has become kind of a first come first serve thing. You have the first cities that jump up, grab all the best tax base, and leaving leave everybody else behind and and and, and off to fend for themselves. I mean that's the problem you have with South Fulton right now. You know you've got all of North Fulton uh, municipalized, and then South Fulton is left there hanging out there with no with no credible tax base really. And that's what that's what worries people is is that you could have these whole sections of of DeKalb that are just locked out of of any kind of tax base that would provide any decent services. Yes, my wife works for Chattanooga Tech mm -hmm. in the funding department, and she's been told that she'd probably get laid off in February sometime. Now, is this information at all filtered down into the schools at all? Do you think, or no, that's a first. I've heard it. We need to talk. Yeah. I don't know what the, I don't know what that what's going on there, but uh, I'll, well, they're switching around uh, in the in the section that she works. There's herself and three other girls that are affected by the changes they've made. They've made all of them uh, college requirements. Every mm -hmm. job, including her secretarial position, mm -hmm. and uh, she doesn't have a bachelor's or any kind of degree at all. But she's been there for ten years, and they're cutting that out and changing the job descriptions so that mm -hmm. it will not include people that don't have a degree. Mm -hmm. Everyone's going to have mm -hmm. to have a degree. Mandatory. And is the is the fact that are they, are they dropping that uh, average back down to three point or? I don't think that has to do with hiring at all. Well, it would, it would be in the funding because of the fact that when no, no, they the, were well, doing 3.0, the, 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 she was extremely busy with... She, well, she they're, trying to, they're, trying to, they're trying to shove more money toward the tech schools so they can, so they can kind of keep up their staffs. Maybe you two need to talk a little bit. You do that Yes, sir. Yes, uh, just curiosity. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, how would you... What would you say about our state legislative delegation. Uh, if you could put names Once powerful, now not so much. Uh, uh, just, I mean, I mean, look, when you lose a Speaker of, a house, of the House, you lose a lot. You know, and, and, and unfortunately, I don't think Glenn 
uh, who I really liked. I mean, you know, he was, I mean, uh, I, I, I don't think he was speaker long enough to really bring home the bacon for y'all. Uh, you needed him in there for at least another good 10 years in order to, to get that. But, you know, you've got Howard Maxwell, you've got, you've got, I mean, I, I know, uh, uh, Oh, what's uh, Earl Earhart? I mean, I know he's not he's not Paulding County, but he's right on. I mean, he's he's my rep, and he's right next door. I mean, he's always he's he can get things done. He's not he he's not as high up as he was. I mean, he was part of the Richardson crowd crowd that got deposed. Uh, so I mean, uh, but but I mean, like Maxwell. I mean, he's 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 building cloud. Uh, you've got some new ones in there. I mean, you've got that one kind of revolving door seat in the house that's kind of gone through uh, some really strange periods. We won't go into details there. Uh, but that, that hasn't helped you. Uh, but, but on the whole, I think you got a solid delegation. I know, I just, yeah, yeah. Uh, let me throw one, one thought, and then I'm gonna let you go, because I know, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm eating into your time. Okay, all right, all right. A lot of y'all, I, I know, you know, probably this, this crowd is mostly Republican. And y'all are going to be wondering why we're focusing on these darn Democrats so much, okay? When they don't stand a chance to, of beating Deal and, and all this sort of stuff. Okay, that's not quite the way we look at it. What we're looking at, if you're, if you're looking at, if, if, you're, if, you're, if you're really into politics, what you're looking at is 2018, okay? 2018 is when we elect the next governor. It won't be Deal, he's term limited, all right? If Democrats want a seat at the table when redistricting comes, they have to win the governor's race in 2018. All right, that's their goal. Not so much the U.S. Senate this year, not the governor's race. It's 2018. That's their goal. What you do, but what they're what they're after is they're pouring millions of dollars through Nunn and Carter this year to find Democrats and register them and get them voting. You'll have a presidential race in 2016, the next cycle likely to have Hillary Clinton, and if it's Hillary Clinton, she will play here. She will, she will, she will, she's got a chance here, and she will put millions of dollars in here. So when 2018 finally comes around, you will have already had two cycles of very, very good, well-funded democratic activity. And that's, that's kind of the game, that's the long-term game plan that we're looking at there for them. And so that's, that's, that's how you kind of got to look at this. It's not just, we're not just looking at May and we're not just looking at November. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a, it's a long growth trend there. So that's all I got to say. I appreciate it. And I'm sorry I went over time. <laughs> Thank you, Jim. We'll have to bring you out of retirement to come back every year. So. We we'll really look forward to you being here every year. We've got a couple of uh, prizes to give away. I think, Puppy, you got a side ad, right?